All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Carrie Anderson. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing fine. I was looking forward to talking with you. Heard so much about you before. Oh, excellent. Thank you. And where are you calling? Where are you today, Carrie? Uh, I'm in Sausalito over the Golden Gate Bridge from oh. San Francisco. Oh, no. Well, after speaking. Yeah. Yeah, I know it well. When I first came to America, I lived in San Francisco for a number of years. I worked in Silicon Valley during the dot com and lived up in Noe Valley. So I know Sausalito well. Great. Yeah. So Kerry is an Emmy winning former NBC Wall Street Journal. She's given TED Talks. She has authored a lot of books. She has served on advisory boards, uh, the Business Innovation, um, World Affairs Council. And so you've done a lot of things. And your and your particular area is really about um, kind of motivating and, and being, you know, being more ex expressive and connecting with people in better, right? So I thought what we talked today to our audience, which is a lot of salespeople and sales managers, is hidden behavior cues that can boost or bust credibility. And so I just wanted to start off, Carrie, when you, when you see hidden behavior cues, what do you mean by cues? There are ways that affect people. Sometimes they're not conscious of it. Mm -hmm. Like one of the studies, it says, show warmth before confidence. Um, there's a reduction in the United States of people asking follow-up questions, mm -hmm. finding sweet spots of mutual interest. And for salespeople, it's vital to notice, too, when the um, emotion rises for good or bad, because you're trying to get a sense of the best path to connect. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting thing, which you say, um, when the emotion rises or whatever. I, I, I do find that that um, people can often be unaware of the the physical manifestations or physiological manifestations of what they're communicating when they're talking or how they're reacting to something. That's true. And if I was to get specific about some universal things that help boost connection, uh, one of them cracks people up when I say it in a talk, but slightly elevated eyebrows mm -hmm. are a universal way of looking more open and compassionate. Mm -hmm. Second, if we're sitting directly facing each other, we're less likely to get along than if there was a slight angle to us sitting. And sometimes when we're walking, we're in motion that's better. And I'm believing strongly in the power of specificity. Mm. So that goes on to other relations yeah. we're talking. So these are some, so you just mentioned some simple things, right? So anybody who's watching or listening to this could say, okay, so if I elevate my eyebrows when I'm talking to somebody, it shows more <laughs> openness. I mean, these are simple, simple things, <laughs> right? You know, sit opposite them. If I'm if I'm presenting, you know, maybe movement is better than sort of standing very rigid, that kind of thing. Lower, slower, and less at first. Mm -hmm. Lower voice, slower voice, lower hand gestures. Those all help in connecting. Mm -hmm. And I do something I call triangle talk. I wrote a right. book about that, too, where because of your interest in or your work in or when I saw you do this, it may be of interest to you if da-da-da. May I suggest some things for you? So I call it the you, us, me, mm -hmm. triangling to connect. And so, but in order to do that, obviously, then part of it is you have to do some research about who you're talking to and you have to listen to them and discover something about them. Because if I said to you, oh, Carrie, I, I found something that might be interesting to you and I told you something that was completely not interesting to you, you'd wonder, well, why did he just suggest that to me? I mean, obviously, he doesn't know who I am. Or he's misjudged it or he right. doesn't remember. Yes, I agree. Mm. So, and I'm asking follow-up questions, though, to say, tell me if this interests you or, or we should pick another angle. Something that's as a setup, say, from what I've heard, it seems that mm. those setups can help that bump. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so tell me uh, um, uh, some other things that um, can boost or bust credibility. I guess let's let's go on the bust one because it's always fun for a change because it's nice when people recognize maybe they're doing some things that uh, could be undermining their credibility. Referring back to yourself more than listening and asking follow-up questions is one of the biggest mistakes people make because then it feels like you're talking at them, not with them. <laughs> Right. So I think the whole goal is to be searching for that point where there's a flicker of mutual interest in what you're trying to sell them or talk about. 
So yeah, and and I think that's an interesting that's an interesting one actually because um, when I was growing up, uh, there was a bunch of us used to be friends, and we had one friend who you knew that if there was anything ever going on in your life, he was the last person you would talk to because whatever you would tell him, he would turn it around to himself, and he would start talking about something to do with him. And I think that you're right. That's that's a habit that people can get into very easily, right? Yes, and it's a hot button with me. Because <laughs> if you don't act genuinely interested, it doesn't really spark that response. And and so do you think part of it is that people don't really understand the difference between listening and actively listening and cognitively understanding what somebody's saying? Because there's a difference between listening, you know, kind of hearing what they're saying and then thinking, what am I going to say next, as opposed to really wanting to understand what the other person has said. I think you said it very well, and I figured in the people I've worked with, it's one thing to know it intellectually, be an active listener, mm -hmm. but they have to really feel the experience and see it. So role playing back and forth. That's why I say the ask the follow-up question, and then the question after that, and then saying something like that. Could you give me an example? So something where they get specific, you know where to take off from that that's most meaningful to that person. Yeah. That's why I believe the key word in my life these days Specificity. Specificity means greater self clarity, mm -hmm. makes you more credible and more memorable. Those are powerful. Yeah, and, and I love that idea of specificity. I'm just writing it down. I love that idea of specificity because I think we are more and more living in a vague culture right where people you can throw out platitudes and you can say <laughs> things that sound like they're interesting or sound like you know what you're talking about but the reality is if you get down into specifics you don't and i don't think people get down into specifics enough do they i don't think they do either there's something called the curse of knowledge sometimes when you know so much you don't know how to make it pithy and specific mm -hmm. and i believe in my own self life um, when I got specific, I think, well, that's not actually what I stand for. That's not actually what I meant. It's five degrees here. So mm. getting specific does lead to greater self-clarity. Yeah. And it makes it more memorable. It's easier for people to remember. Say, I've got a four-point plan. That's specific. Mm -hmm. And I think from the point of view, as we were saying, of sales, if somebody comes in and talks to you, right, and they get down very specific about the issues facing your business and really understand what's going on and articulate it or help you to articulate it, that's more memorable to you as a buyer than somebody who you think, OK, just came in and gave you, talked at a kind of high level. Very well put. I think that's true. And it, when you help somebody else gain greater self-clarity, that's a great path in sales because they notice you're deeply listening and the goal is to support you as a primary thing in the sales conversation, mm -hmm. that helping somebody else is really so, guys. So why is, li I mean, because listening comes up all the time. Why is listening still such a difficult thing for a lot of people? I don't know, and none of the research has given us definite answers. I believe in the research that some people are feeling more isolated or lonely or longing. But I think that having a groundedness literally before going in to meet someone and just exhaling and saying, what is my goal when I talk with them? Is my goal to build trust? Is it to get them to want to learn more? Because the real test is when they start asking you questions. That mm -hmm. interests me. Could you explain that further? And if you haven't gotten that out of somebody else, you know, you haven't been listening well enough and you've been talking too much. <laughs> and and that's I, I love what you just said there about groundedness, because I do feel like we live in a, a world today where people are are or have been cut i mean they're almost like floating if you like there's lack of grounding there's there's so many things coming at them from all different directions they don't really know what's important and what's valuable anymore so how do you start the process of even in your just even in your professional life getting yourself more grounded well i think just being calm for a moment with yourself and having a moment of thinking what would i be best like out of this mm -hmm. and knowing Outcomes can go a lot of different ways. But one of the things, because we're in such a tumultuous world where mm -hmm. there's anger and sure. awful, I, I believe in the funniest thing, and I call it revenge. The sweetest revenge is a well-lived life. Mm -hmm. And you never have as good a chance to look good as when you're around someone who's not. 
So one of the things I've been teaching for salespeople and others is when someone acts rude to you, look genially at them and say, I understand we may have a different view. Shall we talk more about it? Right. And if there's any other observers around that, my gosh, that's mm -hmm. grounded. Yeah. So that's been working really well for a lot of people and for myself. And and I, I love that because I think that communicates a real level of true self confidence, not bravado, not whatever, but true self. Because let's face it, it takes a level of groundedness, as you said, and self confidence. If you're if somebody is being abusive or rude to you, to calmly say to them, "Okay, I I understand. You know, can we have a can we discuss this? Maybe." Yeah, and it's um, self comfort too. And also, I may make I may have misunderstood. They may have had three bad incidents just mm -hmm. before they met me, and they're just popping off at me. So right. I always know I may not know the full picture. And if they bring, if I can bring out their better side, then they're going to like me better. Because the first impression, it's not how they feel about me, but how do they feel about themselves when they're around me. And that's the key to remember that helps us stay grounded with that goal in mind. Yeah, and uh, and obviously I'm not sure whether this interview will go out before or after the midterm elections, but I just think that <laughs> it's a great piece of advice. Wherever you sit on the spectrum is when all this vitriol is flying around from either side, maybe you can be the beacon that stands out and and sets an example for other people of being able to stay you know, grounded and calm and polite in those sort of situations. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Uh, yeah. um, so from from a sales point of view, it's an interesting one because one of the things that I've been looking at lately is um, how people can get triggered very easily, right? And this is, an, and I'm saying in a sales context, you know, you can be sitting in a meeting and then. The, the prospect looks at you in some way and that look is the same look that maybe your dad used to give you when he was disapproval or that's you associate that right so it triggers yes. a negative reaction in you and I think what you just said about that thing of being able to calm yourself in those situations is is very key so what, what how do you how would you advise people how to take themselves out of a kind of a situation where maybe they're negatively triggered and get themselves calm again that's a great question. I wrote a book and then did a course on dealing with difficult people. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing was when people are doing the training very briefly, this circles around the first break, they wanted people to buy books. People come up and say, you know, I've got a jerk just like that. <laughs> they say, in light of that, which of the methods I suggested we try? We call it the broken record. So here's my point. We all have two to three hot buttons in our life. If we're more clear about the things that most set us off, it's like defensive driving. Mm -hmm. You can see seven cars ahead and you see, ah, this is coming. I need to make sure I don't react. I get to choose how I act. So I say self-awareness about the hot button behavior specifically that most steam you. And then think out when that happens, what's going to make me feel good and grounded so I rise above them? And maybe in revenge, I got to look really <laughs> good because they're looking that way. Mm -hmm. That's my brief response to that. Yeah, and and that idea of 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 revenge by looking good is such a, that's a great that's very powerful. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna adopt that one. I will credit you with it, but I'm gonna adopt that one from now on. <laughs> as an, um, but just said talking about self awareness because I've had this conversation with lots of people, and I have found throughout my career, and you know, I had to go through periods of my own painful uh, developing of self-awareness and making adjustments. But I always found in, in management and running companies and people that that was the toughest thing is when somebody lacks self-awareness, it's the hardest, they're the hardest people to deal with. And, and I still to this day don't know really a good method for helping people become more self-aware. Well, one thing is when you're around someone who doesn't seem to know how they're affecting others, it's always good to have another person there mm -hmm. because sometimes when, and you can plan ahead with that other person, what you might do. So your behavior between each other might change it. But secondarily, I think it's just practice mm -hmm. and, um, and un giving unexpected compliments that are true, but unexpected say, well, clearly we disagree about some of these things, or you may not be aware of what I've been doing. But you care, you care a lot. So let's see what's the fastest way we can achieve more for us both. Mm -hmm. Language like that, where we're responding directly and honestly that something could be better, but we're making them feel comfortable and adjusting, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I like that one as well. And I like what you just said about the the hot buttons, because I do think it's something that 
more, I think more salespeople and people in general, not just sales, would be more successful if they identify the hot buttons that set them off. Because those, let's face it, those hot buttons are, it's like Murphy's Law. They're always going to pop up at the most inopportune moment, right? When you're on the verge of something great, they're going to pop up there to derail you. That's very well said. I absolutely agree. And I just hit on another idea that I've been doing. I believe interestingness in our overwhelming life is important. So sometimes if salespeople pair up and they have very different styles, like one's more talkative, outgoing, mm -hmm. and the other is more reserved, they cause interestingness together. And ironically, the one who's more outgoing cannot be as direct sometimes as the other who says, that's important. But before we take up more time, so I think something that's important for you, sir, is so the back and forth dialogue they can create can make more interesting us in credibility sometimes. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good point. So it's the it's the mixture of styles can actually bring about a, a greater experience. Exactly, it makes it interesting us, and one can do the other can't. And I've I've been blessed watching a couple of people get in sync that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's even laughter, collective laughter, saying, wow, you, you said that right. The, the person <laughs> responds, is like, oh, my gosh, you spoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so um, just talk to me a little bit more about what are some of the, uh, in, in your research and the work that you've done, what are some other simple ways that we can improve the way we interact with people so that we create more positive um, back and forth? I think acknowledging that we've heard and understood them. Mm -hmm. And letting them feel like they take charge of the conversation sometimes, but giving the goal, saying, well, it seems like we've covered this first part fairly well. To optimize our value together here, which way do you think we should proceed so that we can blah, blah, blah? Mm -hmm. So saying that, but letting them be in charge, but in a way you're setting the path. Um, and mm -hmm. Or saying things like, have I forgotten anything that would be really helpful for you here? Because we've, we've covered a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. And obviously, to do that, you have to actually been listening and probably taking notes as well, um, which is, you know, again, is you would seem like a given. But I've seen that start to to I've seen people start to neglect that piece now and think they can hold everything in their heads. Um, interesting. You also, writing things down mm -hmm. is one of the best ways for people. I interrupted you, which is a rudeness. <laughs> um, it shows one of the best ways people feel more important and valued if they Absolutely. see someone physically writing, not talking into a cell phone or even that. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, because there's obviously there's a little more effort when you actually put a pen to your paper and do it. And um, interesting thing that you just said a moment ago and what they use in, in family and couples therapy is that idea of when one person is speaking before the other person can respond, they have to repeat back what the other person said and have the other person actually confirm that that's exactly what they said. And it's an interesting exercise, if you ever try it, how hard that is for people because we're formulating our response. And I think for salespeople, it's a great lesson, you know, is that to listen, then repeat, sometimes repeat back and say, am I understanding that you said this is what you said? Because it will really help you formulate your, your answer much better than you would if you were just formulating it while they're talking. I strongly agree with you on that. I do. And telling people ahead of time, we want a thread to the conversation. And one of the ways to have that thread is that you confirm you heard and see if that was what they actually said. I call it going slow to go fast. Mm -hmm. the, absolutely. And I think that's a good point, because I think oftentimes, you know, we're so we so want to get to the end. We want to get to the results so fast that we don't really want to go through the process of getting there. Very well put. I agree. Yeah. So in the in the last few minutes we have here, um, what are some other just um, short ideas that you want to share with the audience about how they can uh, be more credible? Um, well, one of them is your, your voice. Some voice variability shows interest. Second, just about the settings, when there's a lot of ambient noise around, it agitates certain people. Mm -hmm. Third, if we're meeting in a place where there's a lot of, of busyness behind me, that is, looks a lot of detail. I work with some doctors, for example, as well as the people who advocate in behalf of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And people get distracted and they don't listen or focus. And if there's something that's warm and even humorous up front. And the final thing is, I've even had it where I've storyboarded the sequence of what people see where they're meeting for the salesperson. Mm -hmm. And if there's something up and beyond that is cute, 
since we're all racist or biased in some ways, that means a puppy or a cat, there's a picture on the wall of them hugging each other, something. People look, oh, <laughs> it sets up a warmth. Mm. And it's at the beginning, and it look, doesn't look like I'm doing it to you. It sets a path for the conversation. Wow, that's fantastic. Those are those are great. Uh, those are great tips. Um, so uh, I'm going to go buy a puppy hugging a cat poster right now and make sure I bring it bring it everywhere with me. But I, those are great because those are very simple um, tips. And yeah, I think the idea sometimes we don't think about environment. And and as you know, there's nothing worse than if you're if you're sitting opposite per- somebody talking and there's a TV in the background somewhere and you're desperately going, don't look at the TV, don't look at the TV. Oh, I'm looking at the TV. <laughs> But yeah, exactly. Say one thing. Yeah. I wrote an ebook called Mutuality Matters. I think it's like five dollars. Mm-hmm. There's over a hundred tips on connecting in it. Excellent. Well, that's what the next thing I was going to ask you. If you just uh, uh, give the give everybody a little bit more information about yourself and uh, and where they can learn more about you. I have a website called Say It Better, but I'm really into actionable tips. So that book has been. Ripped off by 98 entities um, <laughs> hacking. But it is available on Amazon called Mutuality Matters. And I'm proud of the specificity. Yeah. And you ask specific questions, which makes a big difference on a, on a show, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to uh, mutuality matters. I'm going to get this book uh, because I think, um, judging on our conversation today, I think I'm going to take some tips out of that. But I promise you, whenever I say a tip out of your book, I will credit you with it. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Well, listen, Kari, um, this has been great conversation. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert insight interview really soon. Thank you.